well such a shame to be meeting under somewhat undesirable circumstances oh you're wondering where you are well technically as of this moment you're nowhere doesn't mean that you won't be somewhere soon it just means we're not sure exactly what to do with you hmm. you look startled well there's no easy way to say this you're less than alive transpired dead <laughs> uh, please please don't get upset I hate it when they get upset listen the good news is you have options limited options but there's always a choice mm. well as far as I see it you and I can have a chat, maybe negotiate, or you're welcome to be on your way. But I would be pretty confident that you're pure. If you want to take your chances with the big man, mm. Allow me to explain. See, when most of us die, we pass through without incident, really. But occasionally, someone comes along that tips the balance. Like you. See, you're a tricky case. So much good, so much empathy, and yet so many mistakes. <laughs> hmm. What to do with you? The soul is a weird phenomenon, isn't it? I am a firm believer in the idea that none of us are just good. Life is more nuanced than that, isn't it? Mm. Yes. It is curious, isn't it? Well, my suggestion to you is that I can give you another chance. Mm. Yeah. A chance to go back and fix all the problems, everything that went so horribly wrong for you. See, right now, your family are distraught. They're so upset. Hmm. Losing a loved one, it's a, it's a harrowing experience, really. However, say that were to be reversed, say you were to have another chance, would you really do things exactly the same as the first time? No. I suspect not. <laughs> yeah, you're wondering what's in it for me? Well, I want to get to know you. I mean, I know you, but I want to see what makes you tick, you know? What kind of person when we strip back all this, take away everything that's on the exterior, what makes you tick? <laughs> yeah. See, that's not an option right now. I would love to let you go back and try it all again, no strings attached, but unfortunately, as a businessman, 
It's not really in my interest to negotiate a deal that I don't benefit from. Hmm. That said, I'm reasonable. Yeah, I mean, all I would ask is to check in every now and then. See how you're getting on and maybe call in the occasional favor. I mean, for the price of your entire life back, especially seeing as you messed this one up so badly, it seems like a minor price to pay, don't you think? Yeah? See, the world is in a delicate balance of power. Without the bright, there is no dark. Without the good, there is no bad. So really, I view myself as more of a normalizer, neutralizer, someone that keeps the balance of things in check. <laughs> a counterweight, if you will. And while well, I have these grand desires and ambitions, it's quite hard to enact them from, well, here. No, uh, that's where you come in. Now, this is my favorite part. We get to peel back the curtain and see who you are on the inside. It's, uh, Soul searching, literally. Now, the process of peering into one's soul is more complicated than it may first appear. You see, your soul is not one blob, contrary to popular belief. Now, the soul is, uh, it's more similar to DNA, many strands intertwined you see every good experience every bad experience every positive thought every negative thought everything that makes you tick every single one has a strand they all bind together and this this is what we refer to as the soul but to unpack this to here into someone's being that requires plucking each strand individually and examining it. Now, what I'm going to do today is more of a rebalancing. We don't have to go over every single strand. We're just gonna look at the main ones, the headlines, if you will. I want to find out your milestone events, everything that's made an impact etched on the back of your brain, the things that you go to first when you think of good, bad life experiences. I want to get to the heart of the matter. So, no need to worry about the insignificant day to day. And that narrows the search field quite dramatically. Now, in order for a smooth transition from waking to sleeping to soul searching, you will need to be very relaxed and receptive to my instructions. Otherwise, we're going to clash and have a rather unpleasant experience, okay? However, if you do as I say, then this should go smoothly now. Relax 
relax your neck loosen up your shoulders breathe slowly in through your nose and out through your mouth okay good three seconds on the inhale three seconds on the exhale I just want you to keep that rhythm going, okay? Now, you can close your eyes or keep them open, whichever helps you relax better. This should not be painful. Good. Insignificant, but it's a start. No, I'm just gonna block. Um, very early. I think we need to go a little later, otherwise, we'll be here for a century. Mm. Fascinating things, souls, aren't they? I guess it proves the point that nobody is truly good or bad. Now we're a collection, aren't we? I'm hoping you have some answers to the puzzles on the outside once we get a little deeper. Because so far, <laughs> well, you intrigue me. Just reach. Mm. Interesting. It's gonna. Just someone that you care about very deeply. Somebody that fills you with a strong sense of love or attachment. Somebody that makes you smile. And there it is. Very good. Such loyalty. One of the strongest I've seen. Now. I want you to picture somebody that you hate, someone that you despise. <laughs> Nobody makes you feel like that. Eh? Everybody has somebody who makes them feel like that. Go on, you know who it is. There it is. Remember, keep that breathing going. Good. Interesting. Almost as strong as the first, but not quite. Okay. Now, I want you to picture an average day in your life. Something that you spend a lot of time doing. Something that is entirely unremarkable and very typical. This should give me a baseline for whereabouts feelings are at when nothing is really stimulating. Keep that thought vividly in your mind. A little bit clearer. Really focus on it in your head. There we go. Mm. Well, it 
does shed some light on rather peculiar <laughs> uh, things. Hmm. I think we should push a little deeper with that one. Keep that thought in your head. Now, imagine a typical day, but think back to a typical day where one, one thing very atypical happened and completely threw off the rest of the day. You got up, you did whatever you were doing, it felt entirely as normal, and then one thing happened. Keep that thought in your head. Hmm. There it is. You see. Hmm. Well, I think we need to start cycling through a little bit faster. on the negative ones for a little while. Hmm. It's purely a matter of getting you balanced, you see. Right now you're rather off balance. If you're too light, then well, what an unremarkable, uninteresting life. And if you're too heavy, then well, nobody can function being weighed down emotionally in that way. So I'm here to balance you out. Hmm. I think we're getting there. Slowly. your shoulders, sit up straight, let me have a look, mm. it seems the angel on your shoulder and me on your left shoulder look to be about equal, maybe a little more on this side. Hmm. A little more. Sit up straight. Uh, just a little, a little bit. How do you feel? Would you say you're well balanced? Not too happy, not too sad, relaxed, comfortable. Good. You did well. No. I'm gonna send you back to your body. Uh, there's no easy way to do this. Reintroducing one's soul to one's earthly body after death is, um, let's just say a disconcerting experience as reported by prior people in your position. So I've adopted a method of deeply relaxing 
souls before sending them back to earth mm, this helps to brace a little bit of the impact helps to take the edge off it a little bit it's a deep deep state of trance but it will need your full commitment okay i'll need your full focus you need to commit to relaxing and by the end sleeping this should help buffer the experience and make it as pain free and eventless as possible okay now you can keep your eyes open or close them if you wish whichever feels more comfortable to you Keeping your breaths three seconds on the inhale and three seconds on the exhale. Slow and methodical, purposeful. With each inhale, you can feel yourself getting heavier and heavier. There's a warm sensation of relaxation that starts at the top of your head it moves down behind your eyes down through your neck into your spine it dissipates through your shoulders it pulsates down through your chest into your belly button down your legs into your feet and into the ground this sensation gets more intense and more pleasurable with every rotation good how do you feel? I'm doing very well now, as you continue to breathe and relax you notice your limbs feeling like they're weighed down by rocks but in the way it does just before you fall asleep it's a pleasant sensation but you get the impression that if you wanted to rise and get up you just couldn't you're stuck so relaxed and so deep in trance there is nothing coming between you and the bed as we go through this experience, I want you to imagine a ball of energy, sort of like a cocoon, if you will. This is a protective barrier. Whilst we are inside here, nothing from the outside world can bother us, and nothing is going to touch or stop our sleep and our journey to relaxing, okay? Good. Continue to breathe in. Continue to feel heavy. Your eyelids remain shut. You get the impression that even if you wanted to rise, you could not. So heavy is your body. So relaxed is your thought. Good. Keep breathing very, very good. Now, in your mind's eye, I want you to focus on that cozy place that we all have just before we go to sleep. Everybody has the one spot, the one room, the one scenario that we visit that calms us down. It's our own little paradise. Be it a rainy cabin in the woods, be it a hot summer's day with the sun beating down upon you, be it a beef in the middle of the ocean, the middle of a forest. It doesn't matter. Pick your one cozy, safe place and focus on it in your head. Okay, keep that image there. Now, as I count back from 10, 
The pull of your cozy place is harder and more intense. By the time I reach zero, you'll be fully immersed and fully asleep, okay? If you need to focus, just keep focusing on that spot in your head. Now with every descending number, the colors get more vivid, the room gets sharper, the details get more apparent, okay? You can already see it happening, so just keep focusing on that place. If there's weather or rain or sun, I want you to feel what that would feel like against your skin and hear what that would sound like against the windows or the open breeze, okay? Ten. Just keep picturing that cozy, safe space. Nine. As you look around you, blurry objects become detailed. Things come into sharp relief. Details you weren't aware of before start to appear. You can now read the text on a book from a hundred feet away. Such is the detail in this world. Eight. The more vivid this room becomes, the heavier you feel. Your body feels like it's made out of lead. Rocks. It's pure heaviness. Seven. But in the most pleasurable and relaxing way. Six. This room and space is becoming so real and so vivid. It is almost indistinguishable from reality. Five. Sleep is washing through your body, washing through every single one of your limbs. Four. Good. The bed beneath you feels like it is one with your body. Three. Almost as if you are slipping through the floor. Three. Closer and closer when you lay down. With this final breath into sleep, the room comes into sharp relief and you are fast asleep and totally and completely relaxed. With these final breaths, the room comes into sharp relief, the bed beneath you sinks into the floor as you sink into the bed. Two. So close now. The room is everything in your mind, it occupies all the space, there is no room for anything else other than sleep, and this space, one. Relaxation is total and complete and overwhelming, it is all around your body, it is all in your head, it is everything.